Well, hello and welcome to Doc Onko's Physics. Keith Onko here. What we want to look at today is another one of Newton's Laws problems. And today what we've got is an object on a ramp, on a frictionless, a frictionless ramp. And we'd like to know just what the acceleration is going to be as our object goes from, say, the top of the ramp down to the end of the ramp. And we're going to assume also that from the position that it starts to the position that it ends is about five meters. Okay, And so we'd also like to figure out uh, what the velocity is going to be of our block when it hits the bottom of the ramp. So one of the interesting things that we can do in physics is we can come up with our own coordinate systems, as I've mentioned before. And that's something that we need to do in this case, and it may seem a little bit odd, but it's perfectly valid. Right? Normally, when we think of a coordinate system, right, right, this is x and this is y, and that's fine. Right? But we can take and we can turn our picture or our coordinate system any way that we would like to, so that instead of that, I can have a coordinate system like this where this is y and this is x. Okay? And positive x would be to down the ramp and positive y would be in that direction. So that would be positive x and positive y again would be in that direction up there. Okay? And so that's what I'm going to choose to do. And remember that as long as, as I'm writing my equations right, for a particular object, I use only that information Right, from that coordinate system and in that dimension, right, I'm good. Okay, and it's perfectly valid. All right, so let's take a look at the forces of our block. And we're going to assume that our block has a mass of, uh, say, 10 kilograms. Okay, so let's, let's draw the forces, let's label the forces on our block. It's a frictionless surface, so we don't have friction. Okay, but we do have gravity, right? And which way does gravity pull? Well, this is the surface of the Earth down here, okay? Then gravity, remember, always pulls in a direction that looks like that. It's always going to pull towards the center of the Earth. Well, if gravity is pulling in that direction, right? But we know that our block is going to be moving in that direction. Something is move, making it move in that direction. Okay? So what I can do here is I can break up my gravity vector, this is my force due to gravity, into its components. All right? And I want to find the x component, all right? the x component due to gravity, and I want to find the y component due to gravity. All right? So I'm going to draw in some lines like this, okay? And this component here is going to be the y component due to gravity, and this component here is going to be the x component due to gravity, all right? I have an angle theta that my ramp is angled at, and nicely enough, that is the same angle that we have up here. And I'm going to say that my angle, my, my ramp is angled at 30 degrees here. So I have an inclined plane of 30 degrees, which means that this is also 30 degrees. All right, so, and if this is my hypotenuse right here, all right, that's my hypotenuse. This is the opposite side of the angle, all right, and this is the adjacent side of the angle. Okay, so how do I find Fxg and Fx, Fyg? Well, Fyg is simply going to be, is, remember that Fy is, this is the adjacent side to the angle right here, all right? So it's going to be F times G times the cosine of 30 degrees, all right? And what is Fxg, the X component, going to be? Well, that's going to be Fg, because Fg, remember, is our um, hypotenuse, times the sine of 30 degrees. Okay, 
So over here on the right hand side, I'm going to do some calculations here. So FXG is going to equal, well, FG. Well, what's FG? Well, it's going to be 10 kilograms times 9.8 times the sine of 30 degrees. Now, the sine of 30 degrees happens to be 0.5. And when I do those calculations, I'm going to come up with 49 newtons. Okay, so I've got 49 newtons, and that is Fx, my x component of gravity, okay, that's going to be pulling down the slope. Okay, now how about the y component of gravity? Well, Fyg is going to equal again 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. I'm going to leave the units out because I'm running out of room here. I apologize for that. Times the cosine of 30 degrees, which happens to be point, whoops, 0.866. And when I do that math, I come up with a value of 84.8 newtons. And that is going to be Fy due to gravity. Now, so I'm going to label all this stuff in now because I've got my coordinate system. So my, my force in the x direction, right, in my new coordinate system going down the ramp is going to be 49 newtons. All right, and I'm going to call that positive 49 because in my coordinate system, all right, it's going to the right, going down the ramp to the right. Fyg is going to be, this is going to be my normal force, okay, that's going to be my normal force, and that's going to be 84.8 newtons. Okay, those are the two forces on our block. All right, this is my x direction force. This is my y direction force. There are no other forces on this block. Right, there's not a cable pulling it upward. There's not a cable pulling it downward. There's no friction. That's it. Okay, so let's write our equations. So let's write the sum of the forces in the y direction on our block. What have we got? Well, we've got 84.8 newtons. All right, that's our normal force. Minus 84.8 newtons, and that's the y component of gravity, right? And that equals zero because our block is not accelerating in, in the up and down position, all right? It's only accelerating in our x uh, direction. So that really doesn't give us much information there. But let's write the equation in the x direction. Now remember, the x direction is our x direction in our, in our new coordinate system. All right? So what do we got? We have a positive 49 newtons. Okay? And there are no other forces in the x direction. So what does that equal? Well, it equals the mass of the block, which is 10 kilograms, all right, times the acceleration of our block going down to the right. All right. So if I take 49 newtons, I divide by 10 kilograms, I get an acceleration equal to 4.9 meters per second squared. All right. So there's our acceleration of our block. Okay. I like to know the velocity of the block at the end of the 5 meters, because remember I said that it starts, out, it starts out at the position shown, and it's five meters from that position to the bottom of the, of the ramp. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to use my old kinematics equations. All right. I don't know time, all right, and that's okay, because there's an equation, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2 times a times x. I can use that. Well, I know the acceleration now. I know the displacement. I know the initial velocity because our, our block starts from rest. We didn't really say that, but we're assuming it starts from rest. So I can find out our final velocity. So Vf squared is going to equal 0 squared plus 2 times a. Well, we if forget our a is 4.9 meters per second squared, right? Times x, our displacement is 5 meters, right? And so 5 times, four point, uh, 5 times 2 is 10 times 4.9 is 49 meters squared per second squared. That equals Vf squared. And so V final is equal to 7 meters per second. Now remember that using this equation, we lose the sign. Okay? 
However, so we, we have to look at which the direction of our, our block is moving in. Well, it's moving in the positive x direction in our coordinate system. And so we don't have to add a negative sign in there. It's truly just 7 meters per second as it hits the, the, the bottom of the incline. Well, again, um, what are the keys to solving this problem? The key was in creating our own coordinate system, perfectly valid, right, to match the motion of the object. Right? The motion of our object was not in our traditional XY coordinate system. We had to make an adjustment. We had to turn and twist our coordinate system to match the motion of our, of, of, of our object. That's what we did. After that, it was just finding the forces, writing the equations, and solving the problems. I hope that helps. Have a great day.